It's 75 holiday trivia questions on Christmas movies, modern Christmas songs, holiday celebrity recipes, Disney Christmas, and holiday TV episodes, all provided from the over 1,000 Trivia Round library at crowdper.com. This is Trivia with Buds. Welcome to another episode of the Trivia with Buds Podcast. I'm your host, Ryan Buds. Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Happy Kwanzaa, and all the rest. I hope wherever you're listening in the world, you are so safe and cozy and warm and loved. And I'm so grateful that you like this show and you subscribe to it, or maybe you stumbled across it for the first time. That's even better, because that means you now have 2,200 episodes to listen to of a very quick trivia podcast. Usually, usually it's 10 minutes long or shorter, five minutes long. It's usually just a round of trivia. But today is a super size 75 question extravaganza of all things Christmas and holidays and fun. And I got all these questions from crowdper.com. I urge you to go check out crowdper, sign up for a free account and host a quiz for your family members this weekend. You could do that. It's totally free. It's fun. And I could not run my business without CrowdPur. So shout out to Ross Newton and Philip and everybody over at CrowdPur for helping make my career a reality. And uh, there's just so many good questions all the time. And sometimes I write my own questions for my corporate shows or holiday parties and things, but more than likely, I can find exactly what I'm looking for in the library. I actually used a lot of these questions you're going to hear today on um, holiday parties in the month of December. So I thought it'd be fun to go through, read a bunch of those. Some will be multiple choice. Some will be uh, sort of fill in the blank and uh, we'll have fun going through about five different categories, 15 questions on... uh, a number of different things from celebrity recipes to holiday TV episodes. You'll have a great time. You can keep score at home. You can write down the answers. You can yell them out. If you're at a holiday party right now or on a road trip to grandma's house, we go, as the song says. Uh, Maybe you want to pass some time that way. Uh, However you want to use this episode and every episode of this podcast is totally up to you. And I just wanted to do a supersized one because it is, man, what is it? Christmas Eve. Oh my God. It's Christmas Eve right now as I record this. And uh, tomorrow's Christmas Day. And then my whole family's coming to visit like National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. I'm going to have 15 people in my house. And uh, we are going to uh, be rocking around the Christmas tree for like four or five days. So it's going to be a good time. We just got a new dog named Griswold. Uh, which works with that theme of National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. And uh, we're ready to rock and roll. and hope you guys are too. Without any further ado, we're going to jump into this quiz on 75 holiday things. Here we go. Merry Christmas and happy holidays. Here comes your first of 75 questions. The first 15 here are all about holiday TV episodes, I believe. Are they? No. These are Disney. These are Disney-related questions to kick things off. Disney Christmas, question one. Who plays the ghost of Christmas past in Mickey's Christmas Carol? Who plays the ghost of Christmas past in Mickey's Christmas Carol? Number two, what Christmas elf readies millions of homes for Santa's visit in the animated holiday short Prep and Landing? What Christmas elf readies millions of homes for Santa's visit in the animated holiday short Prep and Landing? Question number three, what former Saturday Night Live funny man stars alongside Anna Kendrick in the Christmas sibling rivalry comedy Noel? Who from SNL stars with Anna Kendrick in Noel. Question number four. What's the name of the titular donkey chosen to ferry a pregnant Mary to Bethlehem in a 1978 Disney special? What's the name of the titular donkey chosen to ferry a pregnant Mary to Bethlehem in a 1978 Disney special? 
Number five, who plays a never-do-well amateur criminal tasked with saving Christmas in the Disney Channel movie Twas the Night? We'll do a multiple choice on this one. Is it Brian Cranston, John Hamm, Matthew Fox, or Neil Patrick Harris? Who plays a never-do-well amateur criminal tasked with saving Christmas in the Disney Channel movie Twas the Night? Brian Cranston, John Hamm, Matthew Fox, or Neil Patrick Harris? Number six, Chip and Dale wreak havoc on the holidays on Mickey Mouse in the 1952 cartoon Blank's Christmas Tree. Whose Christmas tree is that? Chip and Dale wreaking havoc on Mickey Mouse in the 1952 cartoon Blank's Christmas Tree. Number seven, Tim Curry voices a villainous pipe organ named Blank. In 1997's Beauty and the Beast, The Enchanted Christmas, Tim Curry voices a villainous pipe organ named Blank in 1997's Beauty and the Beast, The Enchanted Christmas. Number eight, what is Donald Duck's job at the Royal Brothers Department Store in the 1945 holiday short, The Clock Watcher? What is Donald's job at Royal Brothers Department Store in the 1945 holiday short, The Clock Watcher? Question number nine, who stands in for author Charles Dickens in The Muppet Christmas Carol? Who narrates The Muppet Christmas Carol? Number nine. And question 10, who torments Tim Allen's Santa Claus as the mischievous Jack Frost in the Santa Claus 3, The Escape Clause? Who torments Tim Allen's Santa Claus in the mischievous Jack Frost as the mischievous Jack Frost in the Santa Claus 3, The Escape Clause? Number 11, what Super Bowl winning NFL quarterback appears as a potential replacement for the titular Jolly Old Elf in the Santa Clauses on Disney Plus? What Super Bowl winning NFL quarterback is in the Santa Clauses? Number 12, what 1980s film star plays a fictionalized version of himself in the Guardians of the Galaxy Holiday Special? What 1980s film star plays a fictionalized version of himself in Guardians of the Galaxy Holiday Special? Number 13, which holiday spirit in the computer animated A Christmas Carol is played by Oscar-winning actor Gary Oldman? Which holiday spirit is played by Gary Oldman in A Christmas Carol? Number 14, two teen girls use Santa's weather machine to make it snow in blank. In 2000's The Ultimate Christmas Present is that Phoenix, Los Angeles, San Diego, or Miami. Two teen girls use Santa's weather machine to make it snow where? In 2000's The Ultimate Christmas Present, Phoenix, L.A., San Diego, Miami. And number 15, what dancing Fantasia animals does Daisy Duck summon to help win the skating competition in Mickey's Twice Upon a Christmas? What dancing Fantasia animals does Daisy Duck summon to help win the skating competition in Mickey's Twice Upon a Christmas? All right, going into our next category, question number 16. This is, more, it's called More, Even More Christmas Movie Trivia. So on crowdper.com, they have Christmas trivia, more Christmas trivia, and even more Christmas trivia. So this is the newest round from this year. Here's number 16. What MCU film is the only Marvel movie set during the Christmas season? What MCU film is the only Marvel movie set during the Christmas season? Number 17, what Academy Award winner plays Willie's estranged mother in the critically panned Christmas sequel Bad Santa 2? Who plays Willie's mother in Bad Santa 2? Number 18, multiple choice, which of these Christmas-themed classics was not written by Home Alone director Chris Columbus? Was it Jingle All the Way, Gremlins, Christmas with the Cranks, or The Christmas Chronicles 2? Which of these Christmas-themed classics was not written by Home Alone director Chris Columbus? Jingle All the Way, Gremlins, Christmas with the Cranks, or The Christmas Chronicles 2? Question number 19, what 1950s Bob Hope comedy features the film debut of beloved Christmas Carol, Silver Bells. What 1950s Bob Hope comedy features the film debut of Silver Bells? And number 20. Which of these character actors made his feature film debut in the Steve Martin Christmas Crisis hotline comedy Mixed Nuts? Was it Stephen Root, Leah Schreiber, J.K. Simmons, or Gary Cole? Which character actor made his debut in Mixed Nuts? Stephen Root, Leah Schreiber, J.K. Simmons, Gary Cole. 
Question number 21. What pop star cameos as herself in the holiday stoner comedy The Night Before? What pop star cameos as herself in the holiday stoner comedy The Night Before? Question number 22. At what major North American airport does John McClane thwart a terrorist takeover on Christmas Eve in Die Hard 2? What is the airport for Die Hard 2? Number 23, what is the ornithologically inspired last name of the piano player in Stanley Kubrick's Christmas set, Eyes Wide Shut? Oh, my favorite Christmas movie, (laughs) Eyes Wide Shut. Number 23, what's the ornithologically inspired last name of the piano player in Eyes Wide Shut? Number 24, to what tropical location are Vince Vaughn and Reese Witherspoon attempting to flee their family's holidays in Four Christmases? Where are they trying to go? What tropical location in Four Christmases? Number 25, what festive fantasy film finds Nicolas Cage's carefree bachelor waking up on Christmas morning with a wife and kids? What festive fantasy film finds Nicolas Cage's carefree bachelor waking up on Christmas morning with a wife and kids? Question number 26, what classic Christmas slasher flick was also directed by a Christmas story director, Bob Clark? What Christmas slasher flick was directed by a Christmas story director, Bob Clark? Number 27, Hulk Hogan stars as an amnesic bodybuilder who thinks he might be Santa Claus in 1996's Santa with Blank. Fill in the blank. Hulk Hogan stars in Santa with Blank, 1996. Number 28, what year-round Christmas shop does Amelia Clark work in the Wham-inspired holiday hit Last Christmas? Is it Eternal Holidays, Constantly Christmas, Immortal Wonderland, or Yuletide Wonderful? In what year-round Christmas shop does Amelia Clark work in the Wham-inspired holiday hit Last Christmas, Eternal Holidays, Constantly Christmas, Immortal Wonderland, or Yuletide Wonderful? Number 29, what 1970s? Screen legend, does Jack Black annoy at Blockbuster Video and Nancy Myers The Holiday? Number 29, what 1970s screen legend does Jack Black annoy at Blockbuster Video and Nancy Myers The Holiday? And number 30, whose 1967 song Love Is All Around does Billy Mack rework into Christmas Is All Around in the film Love Actually? whose 1967 song Love Is All Around does Billy Mac rework into Christmas Is All Around in Love Actually. All right, two out of five rounds done. And we've got 45 more questions to go. Sit back, relax, sip that hot cocoa or eggnog, and get ready for Celebrity Holiday Recipes. Number 31, which of these ingredients does Reese Witherspoon not use to make her homemade holiday biscuits? Buttermilk, eggs, flour, or salt? Which ingredient does Reese Witherspoon not use in her holiday biscuits? Buttermilk, eggs, flour, or salt? Question number 32, what Hell's Kitchen chef heats up his holiday table with this festive cauliflower, pomegranate, and quinoa side dish? What Hell's Kitchen chef heats up his holiday table with a festive cauliflower, pomegranate, and quinoa side dish? Number 33, Taylor Swift's favorite holiday cookies are flavored with blank tea. What type of tea does Taylor Swift like in her holiday cookies? Number 33. Number 34, what cheese does singer Martina McBride put atop her green beads with warm bacon dressing side dish? Number with her warm bacon dressing side dish. Number 34, what type of cheese Martina McBride is putting on her green beans with warm bacon dressing side dish? Number 35, in 2019, what raise your glass singer said so what and made melted snow people treats? Number 35 in 2019, what raise your glass singer said so what and made melted snow people treats. Number 36, what booze does Meghan Markle feature in her favorite cozy holiday cocktail alongside almond milk, cinnamon, and ginger? What booze does Meghan Markle add to almond milk, cinnamon, and ginger for her favorite cozy holiday cocktail? Number 37, what is unique about Kristen Bell's Everything Cookies? Is it that she uses whatever is in the fridge? They are boozy, 
They are gluten-free or they are not baked. What's unique about Kristen Bell's Everything Cookies? She uses whatever's in the fridge. They are boozy. They are gluten-free or they're not baked. Number 38, what spice adds licorice flavor to Martha Stewart's holiday mold wine is featured in Martha and Snoop's Potluck Party Challenge. What spice adds licorice flavor to Martha Stewart's holiday mold wine is featured in Martha and Snoop's Potluck Party Challenge. Number 39, Justin Timberlake's Granny's Blueberry Crunch Cake combines yellow cake mix with blueberries and what? Justin Timberlake's Granny's Blueberry Crunch Cake combines yellow cake mix with blueberries and what? Number 40, Whose Magnolia Table Cookbook includes a recipe for one pot Friendsgiving casserole. Number 40, Whose Magnolia Table Cookbook includes a recipe for one pot Friendsgiving casserole. Number 41, in 2022, Katherine Heigl introduced Bedlin's Ranch brand, named for her home in blank, just in time for a four-legged Festivus. Looking for a state here in the United States. In 2022, Katherine Heigl introduced Bedlin's Ranch brand, named for her home in blank. What state? Number 42, Duchess of Cambridge, Kate Middleton, once gifted Queen Elizabeth II some homemade blank chutney. What type of chutney? Did Duchess of Cambridge Kate Middleton give Queen Elizabeth II blank chutney? Number 43, the green color in Cameron Diaz's chia pudding recipe comes from what? Number 43, the green color in Cameron Diaz's chia pudding recipe, or chaya? I don't know, C-H-I-A. Pudding recipe comes from blank. Number 44, what Condé Nast food magazine featured a cream cheese flan from actor Andy Garcia's wife in 2006? Number 44, what Condé Nast food magazine featured a cream cheese flan from actor Andy Garcia's wife in 2006? And to close out our third round of what I think is the toughest of the five rounds we're doing, Celebrity Holiday Recipes. Number 45, what actress started Once Upon a Farm food brand for infants, perfect for babies, holiday plate? What actress started Once Upon a Farm for babies? All right, moving on to modern Christmas music here. Here's number 46, what country star teamed up with Gwen Stefani? For the 2017 holiday hit, You Make It Feel Like Christmas. What country star teamed up with Gwen Stefani in 2017 for You Make It Feel Like Christmas? Number 47, what pop star's childhood home inspired the 2019 song Christmas Tree Farm? What pop star's childhood home inspired the 2019 song Christmas Tree Farm? Number 48, what's the English translation of the classic Carol Noche de Paz, covered by Mary J. Blige and Mark Anthony in 2013? What's the English translation of the classic Carol Noche de Paz, covered by Mary J. Blige and Mark Anthony in 2013? Number 49, Michael Buble collaborated with Blank for his duet in 2014 of the classic Baby It's Cold Outside. Number 49, Michael Buble collaborated with Blank in 2014 for Baby It's Cold Outside. Number 15, what holiday movie soundtrack features Josh Groban's Grammy award-winning song Believe? What holiday movie soundtrack features Josh Groban's Grammy award-winning song Believe? Number 51, you could maybe call Carly Rae Jepsen crazy for remaking the 1984 blank holiday hit Last Christmas. Number 51, fill in the blank with the group name here. You could maybe call Carly Rae Jepsen crazy for remaking the 1984 blank holiday hit Last Christmas. Number 52, what country legend sang this sweet serenade? called Christmas Cookies in 1999. What country legend sang a song called Christmas Cookies in 1999? Number 53, on a very Casey Christmas, country singer Casey Musgraves shares the song Christmas Makes Me What? Christmas Makes Me Blank. On a very Casey Christmas, Casey Musgraves shares that Christmas Makes Me Blank. Number 54, what's the highest charting 
single word title, holiday favorite from acapella group Pentatonix. What is the highest charting holiday favorite single word from a group called Pentatonix? Number 55, who raps his way through a modern version of Little Drummer Boy? Who raps his way through a modern version of Little Drummer Boy? Number 56, which girl group released Eight Days of Christmas in 2001? Was it Destiny's Child, Pussycat Dolls, Spice Girls, or TLC? Which girl group released Eight Days of Christmas in 2001? Destiny's Child, Pussycat Dolls, Spice Girls, or TLC? Number 57, what sweet singer strolled down Candy Cane Lane in 2017? Who had a song called Candy Cane Lane in 2017? Number 58, what music legend joins forces with John Legend on a festive 2018 remake of What Christmas Means to Me? What music legend joins John Legend in 2018's remake of What Christmas Means to Me? Number 59, who contributed I Am the Grinch to the soundtrack for the 2018 reimagining of the beloved Dr. Seuss story? Who contributed I Am the Grinch to the soundtrack in 2018? And number 60, to close out modern music, which holiday tradition, which traditional holiday carol originally appeared only on the international version of Mariah Carey's Merry Christmas? Was it God Rest Ye Merry Gentlemen, Silent Night, O Holy Night, or Joy to the World? Which traditional holiday carol originally appeared only on the international version of Mariah Carey's Merry Christmas? Is it God Rest Ye Merry Gentlemen, Silent Night, O Holy Night, or Joy to the World? All right, we've made it to our last chunk of trivia here. 15 final questions, 61 through 75, and this is about holiday TV episodes. Number 61, what long-running sitcom gifted viewers with the 2002 holiday episode Mary, Joseph, and Larry? What long-running sitcom gifted viewers with the 2002 holiday episode Mary, Joseph, and Larry? Number 62, which friend's character dresses up as the holiday armadillo when all the Santa suits are gone? Which friend's character dresses up as the holiday armadillo when all the Santa suits are gone? Number 63, what Brady Bunch member develops laryngitis threatening their Christmas solo at church in the series only holiday episode? What Brady Bunch member gets laryngitis on the only Brady Bunch holiday episode? Number 64, what was unusual about Community's 2010 holiday episode, Abed's Uncontrollable Christmas? It's a musical episode. The word Christmas is never spoken. It was stop motion animated, or it's the only episode that doesn't take place at Greendale. Number 64, what was unusual about Community's 2010 holiday episode? It's a musical episode. The word Christmas is never spoken. It was stop motion animated, or it's the only episode that doesn't take place at Greendale. Number 65, in the Christmas party episode of The Office, Michael changes Dunder Mifflin's Secret Santa game and calls it what? Number 65, what does Michael call the Secret Santa game when he changes it on the Christmas party episode? Number 66, what TV legend plays a department store Santa turned real life Santa in the Twilight Zone episode Night of the Meek? What TV legend plays a department store Santa in Night of the Meek on the Twilight Zone? Number 67, what December 23rd holiday was first introduced in the 1997 Seinfeld Christmas episode? What December 23rd holiday was first introduced in a 1997 Seinfeld Christmas episode? Number 68, who performed Christmas Baby Please Come Home annually for nearly 30 years on David Letterman's Late Show? Who performed Christmas Baby Please Come Home annually for nearly 30 years on David Letterman's Late Show? Number 69, what real-life event preempted the 2000 Noel episode of The West Wing, causing it to air a week later? Was it Air France Flight 4590 Crash, Indonesia Earthquake, Vermont's legislation of same-sex marriage, or Al Gore's concession to George W. Bush? What real-life event preempted the 2000 Noel episode of The West Wing, causing it to air a week later? Air France Flight 4590 Crash, Indonesia Earthquake, Vermont's legislation of same-sex marriage, or Al Gore's concession to George W. Bush? 
Number 70, what long-running series debuted in 1989 with a Christmas-themed episode? Was it Seinfeld, Baywatch, The Simpsons, or Family Matters? What long-running series debuted in 1989 with a Christmas-themed episode? Seinfeld, Baywatch, The Simpsons, or Family Matters? Number 71, what crime does Ben Weaver accuse Sam Muggins of committing on Christmas Eve on The Andy Griffith Show? What crime does Ben Weaver accuse Sam Muggins of committing on Christmas Eve on The Andy Griffith Show? Number 72, what is Schmidt's oft-memed response when Winston points out a menorah in the first holiday episode of New Girl? What is Schmidt's oft-memed response when Winston points out a menorah in the first holiday episode of New Girl? Number 73, what character's last on-screen appearance comes in the Guess Who's Coming to Christmas episode of Happy Days? What character's last on-screen appearance comes in the Guess Who's Coming to Christmas episode of Happy Days? Number 74, which star of M.A.S.H. co-wrote and directed the series acclaimed Christmas episode Death Takes a Holiday? Which star of M.A.S.H. co-wrote and directed the series acclaimed Christmas episode Death Takes a Holiday? And your final question, number 75, both That Girl and the unrelated sitcom Blank featured holiday episodes titled Christmas and the Hard Luck Kid. Number 75, both That Girl and the unrelated sitcom Blank featured holiday episodes titled Christmas and the Hard Luck Kid. Those are all of your holiday quiz questions for today. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas. Hope you are having a blast listening to this one. We'll be back with those 75 answers after this. We are back with the answers to holiday trivia. Five rounds, 15 questions each round. 75 total questions, all from CrowdPur's library. Check them out at CrowdPur.com and Merry Christmas. Here's number one. Who plays the ghost of Christmas past in Mickey's Christmas Carol? That is Jiminy Cricket to kick things off. Jiminy Cricket. Number two. What Christmas elf readies millions of homes for Santa's visit in the animated holiday short prep and landing? That's Wayne, an elf named Wayne in that short. Number three, what former SNL funny man stars in Noel with Anna Kendrick? That's Bill Hader. Bill Hader. Number four, what is the name of the titular donkey chosen to ferry a pregnant Mary to Bethlehem in a 1978 Disney special? Small One. The name of the donkey, Small One. Number five, who plays a never-do-well amateur criminal tasked with saving Christmas in the Disney Channel movie Twas the Night? Brian Cranston. That was in 2001, seven years before Breaking Bad. And, uh... A lot lighter than Breaking Bad. Number six, Chippendale wreak havoc on Mickey Mouse in the 1952 cartoon Pluto's Christmas Tree. Pluto in the title there. Number seven, Tim Curry voices a villainous pipe organ named Forte in Beauty and the Beast, The Enchanted Christmas, which is a mid-quill. Takes place during the middle of the original Beauty and the Beast, but it came out, I think, six years later, uh, straight to video. So it's like at Christmas time in the original movie, they added this whole storyline with this villainous pipe organ. Voiced by better than who, Tim Curry. Number eight, what is Donald Duck's job at the Royal Brothers Department Store in the 1945 holiday short, The Clock Watcher? He's a gift wrapper, wrapping gifts, watching that clock. Number nine, who stands in for author Charles Dickens in The Muppet Christmas Carol? That's the great Gonzo, Gonzo. Number 10, who torments Tim Allen Santa Claus as the mischievous Jack Frost in Santa Claus 3, The Escape Clause? That is Martin Short, Martin Short. Number 11, what Super Bowl winning NFL quarterback is in the Santa Clauses as a replacement for Santa? That is Peyton Manning. Peyton Manning. The family just finished that the other day. I watched the first two episodes. Pretty good. Number 12, what 1980s film star plays himself in Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special? Kevin Bacon. I still have to watch that. That's on my checklist for things to do today. Uh, But it's PG-13, so I can't have the kids really watch it. So I got to watch it on my own somehow. Number 13, which holiday spirit in the computer animated A Christmas Carol is played by Oscar-winning director Gary Oldman? Uh, Oscar-winning actor, sorry, Gary Oldman. I'm sure he's directed something. Is Jacob Marley. Jacob Marley, number 14, two teen girls use Santa's weather machine to make it snow in Los Angeles in 2000's The Ultimate Christmas Present. And number 15, the dancing Fantasia animals that Daisy Duck summons to help her win the skating competition in Mickey's Twice Upon a Christmas are the hippos. Hippos. How many did you get out of 15 on the first 15 questions from Christmas Disney? Uh, Let me know in a tweet or a message or on Instagram. Ryan Buds on everything. Here's number 16. What MCU films the only Marvel movie set during the Christmas season? Iron Man 3. Iron Man 3. Number 17. What Academy Award winner plays Willie's estranged mother in the critically panned Christmas sequel Bad Santa 2? That is Misery actress Kathy Bates. 
Number eight, which of these Christmas-themed classics was not written by Home Alone director Chris Columbus? That's Jingle All the Way. Uh, The choices were Gremlins, Christmas with the Cranks, Christmas Chronicles 2, and Jingle All the Way. It was Jingle All the Way. Number 19, what 1950s Bob Hope comedy features the film debut of the beloved Christmas Carol, Silver Bells? It's called The Lemon Drop Kid, The Lemon Drop Kid. Number 20, what actor made his feature film debut in Steve Martin's Christmas Crisis Hotline comedy, Mix Nuts? I've never seen it. That's on my list to watch uh, this weekend, too. Leah Schreiber was the answer. Leah Schreiber, Sabretooth and Ray Donovan star. Number 21, what pop star cameos as herself in the holiday stoner comedy The Night Before? That's Miley Cyrus. And another one I haven't seen that's on my list. It's on Amazon if you want to watch it. Number 22, at what North American airport does John McClane thwart a terrorist take over on Christmas Eve and Die Hard 2? Doulas International. Doulas International. Number 23, what's the ornithologically inspired last name of the piano player in Eyes Wide Shut? Nightingale, Nightingale. Number 24, to what tropical location are Vince Vaughn and Reese Witherspoon going in Four Christmases? Fiji, like the water brand, Fiji. Number 25, what festive fantasy film finds Nicolas Cage with a family? It's the family man, Tay Leone is his wife. Number 26, what classic Christmas slasher flick directed by Christmas story director Bob Clark? Black Christmas. They've remade it, I think, three times. Black Christmas. Number 27, Hulk Hogan has amnesia and is a bodybuilder. In 1996's Santa with Muscles. Santa with Muscles. Number 28, in what year-round Christmas shop does Amelia Clark work in the Wham-inspired holiday hit Last Christmas? That's Yuletide Wonderful. And if you paid attention to that, that comes up a little bit later, the title in the band. Number 29, what 19 19- 70s screen legend does Jack Black annoy at Blockbuster Video in the holiday? Dustin Hoffman. He was walking by the filming of the uh, movie past a Blockbuster, and they said, oh my gosh, he kind of like peeked in to see what was going on. And they're like, can you be in this scene? And he was like, sure. So he plays himself in that scene. Number 30, in 1967, the song Love is All Around came out, and Billy Mac reworked it into Christmas is All Around in Love Actually. It was originally by the Trogs, T-R-O-G-G-S. And that takes us out of that category and into holiday recipes. Number 31, which of these ingredients does Reese Witherspoon not use to make her homemade holiday biscuits? That's eggs. No eggs in those biscuits. Number 32, what Hell's Kitchen chef heats up his holiday table with a cauliflower, pomegranate, and quinoa side dish? That's Gordon Ramsay. Number 33, Taylor Swift's favorite holiday cookies are flavored with chai tea. Chai tea. Number 34, what cheese does Martina McBride put in her green beans and warm bacon dressing? Side dish, goat cheese, goat cheese. Number 35, in 2019, what raise your glass singer said so what and made melted snow people treats? Pink. So what? I'm still a rock star. Number 36, what booze does Meghan Markle put in her almond milk, cinnamon and ginger drink? Bourbon. Put some bourbon in there. Number 37, what is unique about Kristen Bell's Everything Cookies? They are gluten-free, gluten-free. Number 38, what spice adds licorice flavor to Martha Stewart's holiday mold wine in the Snoop and Martha Potluck Party Challenge? Star Anise, star Anise is what she puts in there. Number 39, Justin Timberlake's Granny's Blueberry Crunch Cake contains yellow cake mix with blueberries and pineapple. Pineapple for the win. Number 40, who's Magnolia Table Cookbook? Includes a recipe for one pot Friendsgiving casserole. That's Joanna Gaines. Joanna Gaines, if you know Magnolia Table. Number 41 in 2022, Catherine Heigl introduced Badlands Ranch brand named for her home in Utah. Just in time for a four-legged Festivus, that is Utah. Number 42, Duchess of Cambridge, Kate Middleton, once gifted Queen Elizabeth II some homemade marrow chutney. Marrow chutney. Number 43, the green color in Cameron Diaz's Chia Chaya pudding recipe comes from matcha powder, the green matcha powder. And number 44, what Condé Nast food magazine featured a cream cheese flan from actor Andy Garcia's wife in 2006. That's called Bon Appetit magazine. Number 45, what actress started Once Upon a Farm food brand for infants, perfect for baby's holiday plate, Jennifer Gardner. And that closes out the holiday celebrity recipes round. Here comes number four, round number four, question 46. These were the modern Christmas song questions. What singer teamed up with Gwen Stefani for the 2017 holiday hit You Make It Feel Like Christmas, Blake Shelton. Blake Shelton. Number 47, what pop star's childhood home inspired the 2019 song Christmas Tree Farm? Taylor Swift in Pennsylvania grew up on a Christmas tree farm. Number 48, what is the English translation of the classic Carol Noche de Paz covered by Mary J. Blige and Mark Anthony in 2013? Silent Night, Silent Night. Number 49, Michael Buble collaborated with Blank for a 2014 duet of the classic Baby It's Cold Outside that was Frozen voice actress and singer Adina Menzel.
Number 50, what holiday movie soundtrack features Josh Groman's Grammy award-winning song, Belief, The Polar Express. Number 51, you could maybe call Carly Rae Jepsen crazy for remaking the 1984 Wham! holiday hit last Christmas. We mentioned it earlier, and the answer was Wham! Number 52, what country legend sang the Sweet Serenade Christmas Cookies 1999, George Strait? George Strait. Number 53, on a very Casey Christmas, country singer Casey Musgrave shares that Christmas makes me cry. Christmas makes me cry. Number 54, what is the highest charting holiday favorite from acapella group Pentatonix? It's one word, it's Alleluia. Alleluia. Number 55, who raps his way through a modern version of Little Drummer Boy? The Beebs. You got to be a believer to get that one, Justin Bieber. Number 56, which group released Eight Days of Christmas in 2001? Was it Destiny's Child, Pussycat Dolls, Spice Girls, or TLC? It was Independent Women. Destiny's Child. Number 57, what sweet singer strolled down Candy Cane Lane in 2017? That song was by Sia, S-I-A, See You Later. Number 58, what music legend joined forces with John Legend on a festive 2018 remake of What Christmas Means to Me? Stevie Wonder, Stevie Wonder. Number 59, who contributed I Am the Grinch to the soundtrack for the 2018 reimagining of the beloved Dr. Seuss story? That's Tyler the Creator. I Am the Grinch by Tyler the Creator. Number 60, which traditional holiday carol originally appeared only on the international version of Mariah Carey's Merry Christmas? God rest ye merry gentlemen. And our final 15 questions on television holiday episodes. Number 61, what long-running sitcom gifted viewers with the 2002 holiday episode Mary Joseph and Larry? That's Curb Your Enthusiasm, Larry David. Great show, great episode. Number 62, which Friends character dresses up as the holiday armadillo when all the Santa suits are gone? That's Ross Geller, Ross on Friends for his son, Ben. Number 63, what Brady Bunch member develops laryngitis threatening their Christmas solo at the church? In the series' only holiday episode, that's Mother Carol Brady, Florence Henderson. Number 64, what was unusual about Community's 2010 holiday episode, Abed's Uncontrollable Christmas? It was stop motion animated. Probably took like a whole year to do it. Number 65, in the Christmas party episode of The Office, Michael changes Secret Santa to Yankee Swap. Yankee Swap. Number 66, what TV legend plays a department store Santa turned real Santa? In the Twilight Zone episode, Night of the Meek, Art Carney. Art Carney from The Honeymooners. Number 67, what December 23rd holiday was first introduced on a 1997 Seinfeld Christmas episode? I watched it yesterday on December 23rd. Festivus for the rest of us. Number 68, who performed Christmas Baby Please Come Home annually for nearly 30 years on David Letterman's Late Show? That was Darlene Love. Darlene Love. Number 69, what real-life event preempted the 2000 Noel episode of The West Wing, causing it to air a week later? That was Al Gore's concession to George W. Bush after the recount. Number 70, what long-running series debuted in 1989 with a Christmas-themed episode? That was The Simpsons. The Simpsons roasting on an open fire. Number 71, what crime does Ben Weaver accuse Sam Muggins of committing on Christmas Eve on The Andy Griffith Show? Moonshining. Making moonshine. Number 72, what is Schmidt's oft-memed response when Winston points out a menorah in the first holiday episode of The New Girl? It is Judaism, son. Judaism, son. Number 73, what character's last on-screen appearance comes in Guess Who's Coming to Christmas episode of Happy Days? That's older brother Chuck. Uh, Chuck Cunningham, he goes upstairs and never comes back. They never mention him again. Number 74, which star of MASH co-wrote and directed the series acclaimed Christmas episode Death Takes a Holiday? That's Mike Farrell, Mike Farrell. And number 75, both that girl and the unrelated sitcom The Mary Tyler Moore Show featured holiday episodes titled Christmas and the Hard Luck Kid. The answer was The Mary Tyler Moore Show. And there you have it, 75 questions done and recorded just for you guys uh, to hopefully help you get through a nice 45-minute drive or so uh, on your way to somewhere to celebrate the holidays, or maybe your way home, or maybe your plane ride, or maybe you didn't go anywhere but you are just sitting around the fire and you listen to podcasts because you don't have a TV. You're one of those people. Wouldn't that be fun? Thank you so much for listening, guys. Uh, we have a fact of the day to close things out and it's Jingle Bells was the first song played in space. If you didn't know that, now you know. Thanks for listening. Thanks for telling a friend. Thanks for leaving iTunes reviews. Thanks for ordering custom episodes of the podcast for your loved ones in 2023. Email ryanbuds at gmail.com anytime to do so. And we'll see you next time for more trivia with Buds. Merry Christmas and happy holidays.